but I get really put down by people's comments and I've been watching what you say and like how you say don't listen to them but I'm just like a really soft person I'm really sensitive so I have a really hard time let me help you let me help you let me try to help the, yeah. big, the biggest thing the biggest thing that um um that you need to realize is they don't know you and there's two things you have to you have to be empathetic and feel bad for them like do you want Michelle listen to me do you know how sad of a place somebody is in that they've taken the time to watch your video and say something to make you feel bad so that you can feel bad with them do you understand how sad one feels like I, I I'm not joking and I think people think I'm just trying to cheer somebody up I'm not joking when people say shit about you like you're ugly that's stupid you're not funny you're dumb that's wrong you don't you you like I don't know how to do anything other than feel really bad for them yeah it's what's really hard for me is like I have a lot of confidence in like my abilities and like I believe in myself a lot but there is a lot of people like commenting on my appearance which is something that I can't help and I just think that's like a horrible thing to do and it for some reason I believe it every time like I believe that they say I'm ugly I believe it and it, it makes me like not want to post anymore look I we all have confidence and we all have lack of self-esteem I in places for example Michelle I can walk into an arena right now with 80,000 people right now if somebody called and, and said we need you it's the first public gathering in New Jersey you have to give a one-hour keynote we're outside, you have to go right now. We're going to the Jet Stadium, MetLife Stadium. You have to go right now. Now, I would be so pumped. I'd be thrilled. I'd be like in the car thinking, what the fuck am I gonna say? I'm gonna be like, all right, fuck Corona. You know, like, um, right? I can do that. If somebody called me right now and said, on Tea with Gary V, you have to read right now. Here's a piece of paper, you have to read this. I would be unbelievably concerned. I would be super like self-conscious because I am a very poor reader and like like it just really 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 is anxiety for me like sitting around like during like very like the high holidays like reading at Passover or like 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 I'm scared with my, like my family. So so you have a lot of confidence in some areas and in other areas you don't just like every one of us. The reality is though you have to recognize that, first of all, looks. Beauty is uncomfortably subjective. It's just subjective. And you have to really understand that the people that are saying that to you are in a really bad place. You're, you're gonna have to figure this out. You know that, right? Yeah. In a good way. Like, it's yeah. just practice. It's like working out. It's just practice. When you feel exactly like you just talked about, I think you should make pretend that your parents died in a car accident. I know that seems super weird. What I do is I go to a place if I'm struggling and I create a scenario in my head that actually speaks about real life and makes me realize that Johnny 97 talk talk saying that I'm ugly really doesn't mean a whole lot in a world where I'm driving now to the hospital and I've lost my two best friends 30 to 50 years earlier than I should have. That's one tactic. I'm serious, that's one tactic. That may or may not work for you. The other thing that you need to do is go to a place of confidence. For example, I remember in high school, very recently I remember this, when I would do really poor in school and have a real tough day when teachers really shit on me, right? Which was never fun even though I was confident. I would double go home and like focus on my sports cards. Like I would go to a place of confidence, right? Mm -hmm. But the number one thing you need to realize is that it's in your own fucking head. I'm laughing because I'm watching the comments of like so many guys being like, I don't know who said that, but like, what's up? Like I'm ready to slide into your DM. Like you have to understand, like you're, you're deciding you're deciding that that person's right versus the people that tell you you do look. Like, you're deciding, you're deciding. I know and I hate that. We all have things we hate, but you have to realize you can actually change it. But most of all, and I'm gonna give you something really important. I think the thing you need to realize is that 
you can't take compliments in when you get them in whatever you get them in. It's, yeah. it's, it's why I so, it's actually why I find the most insecure people around looks are actually the ones that the world collectively agrees are beautiful. Really? Yeah, because they get so much positive affirmation, they become susceptible to the negative so much more. Mm. I've been shocked as I've gotten older through the years, like boys and girls, like that I, I would argue that the attractive are even more vulnerable to the negative comments because they take so much pride in the positive comments. Yeah. I, think, I think the reason that I can deal with my negative comments is because when I get a goat emoji or I'm the best or I'm a hero or I'm a, especially with like, now that sports cards are exploding, everyone's like, you are Nostradamus. Fuck you, you, you say you don't predict, you predicted this. I hear that and I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I almost don't, it almost doesn't come in. Which also doesn't let you're full of shit, Gary, you were handed out, it doesn't, you understand? Mm -hmm, yeah, that so makes I, sense. I think a couple things. One is perspective. You know, Ricky Thompson saying you're ugly <laughs> versus your best friend, you know, dying from corona is a big difference. Yeah. And those things can happen in life. And all of a sudden when they do, people realize, why the fuck was I worried about other shit, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, trying to really, really go to a place of positivity immediately as an immediate medicine. It's only a medicine, because you gotta really work on the macro, but when you feel it, immediately forcing yourself into places that you make you happy as a quick juxtaposition, which sometimes makes you not dwell on the negative as long. Yeah. No number three, and the most important one, don't let compliments land either. You always say you don't give a fuck what other people think, but what are your thoughts on not caring what other people think versus listening to constructive criticism that's coming your way that you don't want to hear? I only believe in the audience. It's almost yeah. like, oh, Joe, you, I don't want, I'm not in love with constructive criticism from somebody that's in between me and the audience. I'd right. rather go to the audience, let them shit on me. I love that. They're only yeah. right. The, the world is only, I sit here with this weird thesis of sugar daddy cards, but if they fail, <laughs> the audience was right, I wasn't. Somebody who's been in the sports card business for 20 years saying to me, hey, I've been around the block, kid. These won't be anything. I don't believe it. It's actually, ironically, what's happening in sports cards. It's what happened in the wine business. It's what's happening with VaynerMedia. So you grew up in a world where somebody had to say yes for you to get to the audience. Yeah. So you had to very much have a different relationship with another human being's constructive criticism, AKA their opinion. Yeah. I got really addicted to the internet and still am. You know, everyone's very mad at it and it's bad and the Russians and I get it, but it is still the platform that does not have a gatekeeper that lets me be me. No, this show, like I'm brushing my teeth six yeah. minutes before I'm, you know, calling Wine Library to get there. Like, and then like, boom, I'm here, we're here. And nobody's in our ears right now saying like, no, less of that, or don't say fuck again, Gary, or like, yeah. <laughs> like so I, I'm a very big fan of not letting somebody else's opinion dictate your happiness because it's actually doesn't come from like an East Coast, you know, rugged fuck everybody. It actually comes from empathy. I know that nobody knows me. Right. Right. Right, Joe? Like, like they're making a hot take on a moment in time. Yeah. I think you need to like cheer people too. What I do too is like I have tears of friendship and we joke about that. But if somebody gets in your life in a way and when they say something, it sounds different than somebody else. Well, it's, it, it's, funny, it's, it's funny you say this. You know, I, I say this to a lot of entrepreneurs that have had some level of success who are really struggling. Like, this is where comedians have an incredible advantage in the new world. Most people have thin skin and can't put out content because they're so sad when people leave negative comments. Right? right? That's why stand up is so hard. 
In yeah. some way, Joe, I think almost everyone's doing some version of stand-up, not as hard, but like they're putting themselves out there and, 100%. right? Getting judged, yeah, getting, getting judged, judged. judged. And, yeah. and I've been thinking a lot about this. I struggle with people judging me in the comments around business because I've accomplished things and I would need to know what they've accomplished to allow it to carry weight. It's kind of like athletes. Like I laugh when me and my buddies sit around and critique Paul George. He's <laughs> one of the 50 best players in the world. None of my friends on this 30 person chat thread the other day that are taking a complete shit on Paul George. On him. And I'm saying to myself, this guy's one of the 50 best players in the world right now for yeah. sure. And none of the people on this thread can make three consistent jump shots wide open. <laughs> They called him a piece of shit. They're like, oh, oh, come on, man. And, and so for me, when somebody's like, Gary, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And then I go to their account and I spend 10 seconds on them. Like, I have my 23 years of work and success. You know, you have a fake Gucci watch to try to make yourself feel better. I'm going to be okay. So to your point, you've got to you've got to judge the judger. I respect criticism, but, uh, um, I, I respect people's opinions. I, I I like hearing it, but I only believe in the audiences, the end consumer.